Welcome to the Advanced Material Techniques tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to get the most out of a few simple elements. We'll begin with the reconstruction of a basic asset from UDK and then work on expanding it to something slightly more significant. So to begin with, the asset that we're going to be using is this one just here. You may recognize it from within the game. It's pretty popular, very useful, and helps get, add a bit of volume to your world. Makes the floors, don't, uh, makes the floors not seem as, uh, as flat as they really are. So to begin with, we're going to be uh, basically harvesting the textures out of this and using that for our new one, just uh, for the sake of recreating it and really demonstrating what each component is, is, uh, is doing within it. So to begin with, we're going to get the basic textures that are already there, which are the specular, diffuse, and normal maps. I'm going to work off that. So I'm going to grab these textures. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you don't grab the ones with the underscore flattened. Those are for mobile. The ones we want to grab are these here. So organic 5B, D, N, and S. Diffuse, normal, specular. Now, for the most part, these aren't really too noteworthy, except for this one little element. If you go to the diffuse, you'll notice that we actually have an extra channel. If I turn off red, green, and blue, we have this extra data here. And what this data is, is alpha channel data. Now, typically, we use this for things such as the opacity of, of an object. But in this case, it's being used to store uh, the height map data more on that in just a bit. So I'm going to click on the texture and I've already gone and created a dummy material and applied that dummy material to the object. To do that all you have to do is right click and hit create new material. It's nothing amazing. So on the left we have epics material, on the right we have the one that we're working on. Now to begin with I've clicked on the diffuse already. I'm going to hold down T and left click. We've now got this in there. So the diffuse has been added. I'm going to connect the black node which is the three vec to diffuse. And now I'm going to go and do the same thing with the normal and the specular. So if I click on the normal, drag it in, click on the specular, and hold down T again, click there, and click that in. You'll notice we got that little bit of a shine as the normal, uh, sorry, as the specular popped in. So this is where we start off. And to begin with, you know, like that doesn't look horrible. If I was to tick this, we'd be able to see that, you know, look, that that's possible, I guess. Uh, but we could do a hell of a lot more. And if you look at the one that Epic have actually used, it's substantially better. Now, the thing that I'm really trying to push throughout this tutorial is that a lot of people go off and they add all of their detail into the standard texture itself. But, you know, this actually isn't necessarily the wisest choice. There's a few things you can do to make simple variations on a single texture set that you've brought in, and it can really, really bring out the world. You'll understand what I'm talking about in just a minute. So to begin with, uh, I think that it's probably a good idea to start with using this little alpha channel I was just speaking about. To do that, I'm going to search for the word bump. And now we end up with what we call a bump offset. So a bump offset makes it appear as if areas within your, uh, within your material are actually being raised above others. It connects straight into the UV channel. But the information that we want to feed into it is actually from the alpha channel just here. So I'm going to clone this, put it over here, and I'm going to run the alpha channel straight into the height map data. I'm then going to run this into the UVs. Now I want you to pay close attention to what happens on the left side of my screen. In fact, I'm going to expand this so you can really see what's going on. So pay close attention as to what happens when I connect this, and this, and finally this. You should have noticed a little bit of popping if you have it in high res. So to really kind of push this, I'm going to change this value to 0.2, 0.1. You can see that uh, 0.1 is probably the sweet spot on this one. It really gives the illusion that these cracks in the texture are actually three-dimensional cracks. Do you see that going on? It's good. So it's a nice way to cut back on poly count with just one little extra uh, channel that's being read in there. So again, I bring this out here, I hit tick, and we have that little bit of extra depth kind of coming out there. And that's a good start, you know, I mean... It's all right, but let's let's do better than that. Next thing I want to focus on is the normal. Now, the normal isn't half bad, but it could be a lot better. At the moment, the normal texture is kind of like, it mostly sets out where these cracks are, and it's got a little bit of detail work on it. But if you were to zoom in on this thing, uh, you'd notice that the, the, uh, the main detail bits there, they're not exactly great, and they would probably make you break down crying if you're a regular shader artist. So let's avoid tears and actually work on that. So to begin with, we're going to get the uh, a crackle normal and bring that in. 
to do that, I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to type in the word crackle, and we'll find that we have this dude just chilling out. If you look at it, it's really just bumps of noise, and that's actually really good for us. So I'm going to click on the texture, and I'm going to go to here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down T and click, same way as we have with any others. Now when it comes to normal maps, I'm not going to bother getting into the, uh, the major theory here, but typically whenever you're applying a detail normal, what you want to do is only really focus on the red and green channels. Okay, so to get the red and green channels out of this, there are a few ways we could do it. I could either grab these ind independently and, you know, add these into here, but that's probably not your best solution. Uh, my suggestion would be to hold down C and add a component mask, which adds this red green mask. I run that into there, and I want to add this data to here, but if anything's coming out of a black node, then that means it's a three vec. If and if it's coming out of a mask, which only has two channels, that means it's a 2-vec. What this means is that these don't actually match up. You can't really add them together. You know, I'm going to even demonstrate that. If I was to plug this into this, into this, we get tiers. So, to avoid those, what we do is we're going to append data to this. And what this does is this adds an extra channel to this thing here. I'm going to hold down 1 and click, and by holding down 1 it adds a single constant value. I'm going to plug it into the append, and then I'm going to run that up into the B channel. Okay. Now, if you're paying attention, I'm going to plug, I want you to look at this screen on the left hand side as I unplug what we just did and put the base normal in. You see the difference there? So it's added those extra bumps that were brought through from this crackle. Now, unfortunately, those bumps are huge. Uh, so what we really want to do is actually get this nice repeating pattern. To do that, what we do is we add a texture coordinate that tells it to repeat over and over and over again. So I'm just going to plug this texture coordinate into here, and I want you to see what happens when I change these values to 3, and then 3. See, we've got these little lines now, just kind of like appearing. I think even maybe going with 5 could even be better. So now if you would actually zoom in on this texture, it would seem like someone had put a lot of work into kind of getting these final little detail parts in there. But the reality is, is you've got one low-res texture here, and one low-res texture here, but this one just happens to be tiling over and over again. But a cursory glance isn't going to give that away. Instead, it looks like we have an object with far, far, far more depth. Now, the next thing that we want to focus on is kind of getting the shine off of the object to be a little bit better. And some people focus on this towards the end. I tend to get on it way too early, but that's okay. So at the moment, the specular is being plugged just straight in. Uh, what we really want to do in this case is actually just uh, make it that little bit brighter. So to do that, I'm going to add a multiply, and I'm going to add a constant. Again, with the constant, all you have to do is hold down 1 to add the multiply. All you have to do is hold down M, and I'm going to plug it in. Now, at the moment, I'm multiplying it by 0, which turned off my specular. That's bad. So I'm going to change this to 1, so you can see it initially. 2, 4, 10. So you can actually get this really high shine coming out of it if you want to. Uh, and I'm actually going to keep this at 50 just for a second so I can demonstrate the next part. Now the next part is what we call specular power. This is really, really important and somehow like 90% of people that touch UDK seem to miss it. So what do you do is I add a constant variable to spec power and I plug it straight in. Now if I was to change my spec power to 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 50, you might notice that the actual highlight spot, actually like, you know, the size of the highlight that's being applied is actually shrinking as I bump that number up. So it becomes a kind of a game of finding what the right size of the spec power really should be. It's kind of difficult to figure out, but I'm going to crank 15 in because uh, maybe even... Yeah, I'm getting nitpicky. I'm going to call it 20 for the time being. And back on this here, I'm going to drop this back down to something that's just really subtle. There you go, so I'm multiplying the spec by 5, and now we have this nice shine kind of coming off of it. Okay, so we're moving up in the world. Now the next thing that we'll be focusing on will actually be this diffuse texture. So to do the diffuse texture, the main element there is actually going to be working on getting variation in there. We'll do that in the next part of the tutorial.